all this word, when he say quickening, that means that you understand. When somebody teach you and you say, oh, man, yeah, now I understand what this scripture means. Now I understand what that scripture means. Or in the world, somebody teach you how to, say, braid hair. Oh, okay, that's how you do a three-strand braid. Okay. That's what we're doing now. We're teaching. So we can quicken y'all and ourselves to, to understand the trap of this tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we can keep the, he said, thou shalt keep the commandments without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You got to keep it. It's work every day. Work. But people think, once they always say, I got news for you. That's a lie for them Sunday churches. God, the devil came to snatch you out of God's hand, but you can walk out of them. That's, right. That's your job. Either stay in God's hand or stay in Satan's hand. Ain't no in between. I don't know where you heard that from. Jump down to verse 17. Go ahead. Charge them that are rich in this world. What God said, what? Charge them. Put some charges on these joking that are rich. They got a responsibility they don't understand. They're holding this wealth and they should be doing something with it. Go ahead. That they be not high minded. Don't you be high minded. Don't think you're more than what you are. Go ahead. Not trust in uncertain riches. Don't trust in the riches of your bank account because you have because you got money in there. But yeah. people trust in that. Go ahead. But in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That's what he did with Job. You remember Job? Job didn't trust in all the riches he gave him. Satan stripped him of everything. But one thing Job did, he held his integrity. And he didn't fall for the trick that Satan did on Eve. He tried to do it on his wife. What Job told his wife? Foolish ones. Foolish ones. Adam didn't say that. Adam, like most of us in the world, all right, baby, come on. <laughs> He got the responsibility of Adam. The man got to know. The man got to know. If you, he put you in a very powerful position as a man, knowing how to direct your family. But if you don't know that, y'all gonna wake up in the lake of fire and say, Daddy, why you ain't tell us? Why you ain't tell us? Y'all, you heard. And God gonna play it on the screen. He went to the Bible study with Jeff. He talked to Jeff. He talked to the enemy of Israel. Like he understood. That's why I tell the man, I said, look, man, you're going to take down your whole household if you're trying to make your household feel good without the law. You got to, it's, it's a tough position. It's tough. It ain't easy. Charge them that the rich in the world, that they be not high-minded, no trust in the riches, uncertain riches. These riches are uncertain. They're not going to burn them all up. Go ahead. Verse 18. That they do good that they be rich in good works. See, this is what God wants you, the rich man, to do. He said that they be good, that they be rich in good works. Go ahead. Ready to distribute willingly to communicate. So you got a lot of people who are rich. They ain't willing to distribute. I heard Michael Joe one time, man, a bigger man walking by him in the child parking or somewhere, and he had Mike for some money. Mike said, you had me, had me for money. For money, he can ask for a job at McDonald's. You rich, man. If the man poor and need to need something, give me to him. What, what's $10 going to hurt you, Mike? That's how these rich people do. They're not willing to distribute it out to help people. They're not. Let me show you an example of that. We finish with that? No, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. 19. Uh -huh. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. See, that's what God wants you to make sure you distribute, you communicate, so you can lay hold of something that's going to be a rock to you, which is eternal life. You giving your money, like we sow seeds in here, we give money here, we doing it for a purpose. And God looking at that. He looking at it all to help the ministry go forward. I ain't talking about these preachers out here just every sermon. They talk about money. I hardly ever talk about money. Y'all know that. that ain't, that's not what I'm here for. At all. I'm here for this salvation. 
How many of you guys like to say, oh, lay up a store of themselves of a good foundation against the time come that they may lay hold on eternal life? Amen. This is it. Go ahead. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Yes, sir. Avoiding profane and vain babbling mm. and oppositions of science falsely so called. This is what he's telling you. He said, look, man, keep wishing, committing, and trust. Avoid profane babbling. You walk in the church and everybody's speaking in tongues. Oh, you need to walk out. <laughs> They're speaking in these unknown languages. That's vain babbling. It should be an interpreter. That's me and Karen we were talking about last night. Interpreter. You walk in somebody, Karen thought, hey, man, I was, I was wrong. I couldn't catch the Holy Ghost. Because everybody else said, you're supposed to speak in tongues when you catch the Holy Ghost. This is what the world speaks, don't understand that if you don't have an interpreter and that language is not something that we can interpret, you need to shut up. Yeah. It's stupid, man. It's dumb. You walk in there, everybody speaking in tongue. Ain't no interpreter. And the preacher said, up there oh yeah, I see the Holy Ghost going on wild up here. That's the devil ghost. You got to have an interpreter. He said, the opposition of science, falsely so-called. People don't believe God unless science prove it. Mm -hmm. Scientology, they got a whole church about that. Well, I know about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Science, Tyler, Brad Pitt, all the people in the world got all this money. They in there. Oh, it got to be science, bro. I got to know about science. And they tell you all the time, it's a, it's a million steps to the, to the moon. Who stepped, or not the moon, it's a million steps to the sun. Millions of steps to the sun. Who ever stepped on the sun? What science say, well, it's that many light years, I didn't know. Can't nothing get close to the sun. Can't nothing step on the sun, period. But they're going to tell us how many steps to the sun. Light years and all that stuff. Man, it's science. Don't go with that. Some of it is okay. I ain't saying all of it. If you can back it up from the doctrine of the book, we'll roll with it. If you can't back it up from the doctrine, that's from the tree of Satan. Good and evil. You feel that? Yes. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. Let me show y'all how distributing that you should distribute the goods. And when you make a vow to God, do not go back on it. That's why you can't have your emotions so high. When you're talking to God, or you make a promise to God, you hear people all day, I put that on all I love. I put that on God. And they be lying. This is what they do, I put that on God. And these people right here, when we're gonna read about this Israelite, they was happy, uh, what was going on in the churches, and everybody was gonna sell their land. And they made a vow to God. And God said, don't make no vow to me, you don't pay it. This is what he's saying about evenly distributing. Do what you say you're going to do. Don't follow the tree and lie. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Go ahead. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. Yes, sir. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, mm -hmm. but they had all things common. See, there was all over job God done for them. They said they had things that they possessed. They said the things one they didn't want to own them all. They want everybody to have it common. Everybody be equal. That's right. Equal. And they confessed that they was going to do that. The whole congregation of Israel. Go ahead. And with great power gave the apostles witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. And great grace was upon them all. So the apostles had that great power because they were working with the knowledge of God. Not the knowledge of the good and evil tree, the knowledge of God. Go ahead. Neither was there any among them that lied. Mm -hmm. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the price prices of the things that were sold. So didn't nobody lack because everybody agreed all the stuff we possess, we're gonna sell it 
and put it in a pot and distribute it amongst everybody. Now they made a vow before God to do this. Go ahead. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. Yes, sir. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. This what distribution? They start passing it out. Make sure everybody got the same amount. Everybody get a hundred dollars. Everybody get a uh, chicken for their house. All this stuff. Everybody get everything, the money they need. But somebody didn't want to do the do, do right. Go ahead. And Hosea, I guess that uh, Josie's, yeah. who by the apostles <laughs> was surnamed Barnabas, yes, which is being interpreted the son of constellation, uh -huh. a Levite. And of the country of Cyprus. Cyrus, Cyprus, you're right. You see, this is Levite. They laid this before the Levite. The Levites were the preachers, the priests of Israel. And they the ones that took the charge and distributed out of all the possessions. Everybody sold their land and got the money, so we're going to give it to the Levite and they're going to give it eagerly to everybody. Go ahead. Had the land, sold it, brought the money, laid it at the apostles' feet. Hey, Everybody did what they supposed to do except for one person. Two people. Let's see. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. Let's see what happened. God said, make sure you do, uh, distribute this out evenly. But when money is involved, some people make some wrong decisions. Go ahead. Verse, verse 1. Acts chapter 5 and verse 1. Go ahead. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, Sold a possession. So this married couple, they sold a possession, but when they got that money in their hand, what happened? And kept back part of the price. Man, my land was worth on, my land was worth a thousand dollars. I gave a thousand. And this married land was worth about a hundred. Come on, man, I'm going to keep back about five on That'd be good. But you made a vow. You told them that you were going to sell the land and give it all to the priest. That's why we got to be careful how we talking. You promised God something. He said, look, you're going to pay it. Go ahead. We're going to see how they pay it. He said he kept by the part of the price. Go ahead. His wife also being private to it, mm -hmm. brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So his wife knew what time it was. She knew how much the land was, was, was worth. She was part of the whole situation. And listen to what Peter said, the man of God. Go ahead. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Wait a minute. Who filled his heart? Satan. 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 That tree, that in Genesis, is still working. Still working. He's doing his old tricks. Money, possessions, merchandise. They got the money in their hand. They said, man, no, that's too much. I'll give a little bit. No, you made a buy. You told God you're going to save your land and give it all. And evenly distributed amongst everybody. Everybody got the same thing. Mm. Go ahead. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? See, we got to understand this. This is why I have to understand. The Holy Ghost is in my house, in my bedroom, in my bathroom, looking at me all day, every day. He just sitting there looking. Know what he doing? He writing out everything I say and do. He writing it down. He don't sleep. What does Ezekiel chapter 8 say? He said he got these watchmen running to and fro the earth, reporting back to God. He's sitting there right. And this is what the Holy Spirit saw. He lied to the Holy Spirit, which is God's spirit. He reported. No, he didn't give that, that amount of money. Look, I see it. Play it back for me. He is I. He is the Holy Spirit. Is God I. It's like what they call this thing, um, uh, GPS. Is it GPS? The all seeing out of God's eye. He's like the camera. Excuse me, the camera. They got cameras all over the world, and the president or this thing they got on the internet where they can look at your house. And he, uh, yeah, he's a satellite dude. He's a satellite, and he can report back to God far off in the heaven. And show you everything that we're doing. And that's what happened to this married couple right here. They put back a little more, put back a little money for themselves. And what happened? Go ahead. Verse 4. Why does it remain? 
Was it not thine own? He said, Why well, it was your own? Go ahead. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Yes, sir. Why has thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. See, you made a confession that you were going to sell it. He said, You think you lied unto men? You lied unto God. What happened to him? Go ahead. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down, gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. God killed him on the spot while he was up there talking. When they say gave up the ghost, that means your breath in your mouth. You need oxygen to live. God took his oxygen away. Boom! Dropped dead. Why? Because he, listen to Satan, that tree, like most of the world is doing today, listening to him. In here, God killed him on the spot. Because he said, you didn't lie to me, which is Peter. You lied to the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost went back and put to God. This is what he sold his land for. The moral to the story is, don't make no promises to God that you're going to do something and don't do it. Now, here come the wife. Go ahead. And the young man arose, wind him up, and carried him out, and buried him. Yes, sir. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. So in three hours after, now he's going to ask her the same thing now. Why? Don't be following your husband when he doing wrong, sinning. He don't know what he's doing, don't follow him. You got a lot of cats out here who got is a man, but they're not a man in this book. Be careful who you marry. Go ahead. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Same and question. she said, Yeah, for so much. Same question. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Behold. The feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Woo! So he told her why she had the breath in her body. You finna die. She would listen to him and say, you finna die. Lord God stripped the right then of her breath. Because mm. they listened to the tree. Money was their motivator. When you're making a vow to God, you can't do that. You can't go back on that. You can't. Go ahead. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. Two people died because of money. Money. Go ahead. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Well, I bet it was. You in the church looking at that joke and said, fall like that? I bet you be carrying that. Did I give it all? <laughs> Did I get it? I wait for him to get some more. Here, here. So I know I would be. Let me show you second demo. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. This man is not trying to give you possession so you can live godly. He's trying to kill you. 1 Peter chapter 5. One verse here. We almost done. Got two more for this. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Let's see Satan MO. What he's trying to do to us. Upon this earth. Because he's here. Job told us that. When Satan, when God asked Satan, where you being, Satan? He said, I want to be walking to and fro over there. Let's see what he's doing to us. Let's see what he's trying to see. What he's looking for. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Go ahead. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. He don't want to just kill you, he want to devour you. Because he knows what you're going to become if you follow this book all the way out. So he's going to give you, he said, be sober. He's talking about physically sober and mentally sober. Vigilant. Understand what you're supposed to do and do the operation of God. Understand what he put you on the earth for. Because Satan sit there waiting till you slip. Waiting till I slip. So he can come in and boom! Got him. 
Got him. That's his MO. That's the tree of knowledge of good and evil that took down the whole creation right back in Genesis. And we still read about him in the New Testament. Let's go to John chapter 10. John 10 and 7. Satan, him over his simple. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. He don't want you to live no eternal life with God. He wants you to live eternal life with him in the lake of fire. He knows his destination. Mm -hmm. He knows it. He just needs some comfort. He's going to have plenty of it, too. He's going to have plenty of it. That tree of knowledge and good and evil, which is Satan in Genesis, all that is a metaphor, that's it. John chapter 10, verse 7. But we got to know the tricks of this cat. The traps. Go ahead, brother. Then said Jesus unto them again, Very, very, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Yes, sir. All that ever came before me of thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Understand that Jesus said, I am the door. What are you talking about? Little door, you walk in and out? No. Hmm. He's just using that as a metaphor. Meaning that he's the way to get into the eternal kingdom and not be in the lake of fire. He said, I am the door of the sheep, and all ever before me are thieves and robbers. Farrakhan is a thief and a robber. Joe Osteen is a thief and a robber because they're robbing people of their soul. Farrakhan with his Muslim religion, he trying to cater to the black man. He got an Arab religion. <laughs> Arab. We Israelites. And he going in the same mouth, same mouth saying, well, we are Israelites. Man, which one are you in your religion? Are you Arab, which is coming from Muhammad? The real Muhammad that couldn't read or write, he was illiterate. He was just a master of motivated men. Then he married this woman that was Arab, she was rich. And when she was rich, they found the Hebrews and they take bits and pieces of the Bible and constructed the Quran. The Bible predates the Quran 500 years. You don't tell me that's an extension to the Bible? That's the word of God? I know the history. I got it, come on. I read it. Then the Bible said of it. All of it. We know what we're talking about. Go ahead, let's get back to that. Verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. We're going to one of these doors today. The Sabbath. Isaiah chapter 56 said, if you keep this day, I promise you, God said, I'm going to take you to my holy mount. I'm banging on that because all that stuff I'm doing, I don't know if I'm going to make it off of all the other stuff. I'm going to try to keep this day holy as possibly I can because he made a promise to me. I'm going to take you with me if you keep this day. I'm banging on that. God, don't look at me. I ain't, I ain't never said I'm saved. I know I got to endure to the end. I know how much sin I do. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill. Yes, sir. And to destroy. Uh -huh. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I come that they might have life, and might have it more abundantly. What is life? Keeping the law. What is life for you on your job? Following the rules and regulations. You stay high. Show up three hours late, more than one time. They're going to fire you. Don't show up for work like most people don't show up for the Sabbath day. God going to fire you. That's what it is. It's a law that we must come together on this holy day. He's going to fire you. Now, we understand people are working. I ain't talking about the ones that are not working to do this. I'm talking about the one who deliberately said, no, I'm keeping something. That's Lord. Day. My preacher didn't tell them. My mama said this. My daddy did this. I'm going to do it. But do it with them. Go to hell with them. Go to hell. That's all it is. 
What verse? 11. Go ahead. I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Who is the shepherd? Jesus. Jesus. This is just symbolism. That, like I said, LeBron James is a what? Beast. Jesus is a what? Shepherd. It's simple. Ain't nothing trying to mess you up. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the one you need to be. You got a lot of shepherds in this world, but they ain't good. They ain't good at all. Go ahead. But he that is at hired and not the shepherd whose own or whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep mm -hmm. and fleeth, and the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. See, these are the ones that are hired. The hired them. They get paid to preach on the Sunday. They take resources from the church and get paid. And they are not protecting the people from that wolf. Who's that wolf? Satan. And that wolf coming, he telling you, it's okay. I'm gonna give you $20 an hour you come to work. I'm gonna work double time. That day I'm gonna give you four. Just come on Saturday. Just come on. I'm gonna give you $40 if you show up for Christmas holiday to, to function at the job. You just put your up and have pleasure. Just show up at our Christmas Day party. We're gonna get paid a bonus check. And people say, man, that's some good money, Joe. I don't think the Lord gonna miss me by that. <laughs> man, they just hired you, man. Your soul, he bought you for cheap. Mm -hmm. He said, but he that is in hiring, most of all I'm talking about these preachers, hiring, you hire, not the shepherd whose own sheep are not. See if the wolf coming, we see the wolf coming. Who's the wolf now coming in right now? Satan and who? The Antichrist or the man of sin. He rolling around here. The Pope. We see him coming. We see that they're trying to build a third tip in Jerusalem. We know it coming. So what we doing? We're going to flee to the wilderness. We see it coming. Oh, well, it's on for me. I don't speak for me. But we see it coming. I'm warning y'all. That's what the good shepherd do. That's what people, the, the ones that are not hired, we are warn the people. But these cats right here, they're going to keep that Sunday worship going, that Christmas Easter going, they're going to keep it going, Thanksgiving going, they're going to keep it. They ain't going to take you none of that. Go ahead. 13. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling. Why are you fleeing? Because he's a hireling? Because <laughs> all he did for the money. Let you don't pay him something and see how long he's gonna be there. Let you don't pay him. I ain't paid me a dime. I'm here every Saturday. I don't get paid. The money y'all get going on the account to help you all and me if I need it. I know how this is. I ain't taking nothing of the Lord unless I need it. Unless y'all need it. Go ahead. The hireling fleeth because he is at a hireling. And cares not for the sheep. Oh, he don't care for the sheep. He care for that check. <laughs> that almighty dollar. I'm here, boy. Y'all got that dollar? I'm T.D. J. told them folk. Uh, he didn't go. Uh, what did he say? He went to Africa or somewhere. He charged seventy or a hundred thousand dollars for an appearance. But they had that money right. T.D. J. sat there and waited till they wrote that check. He didn't go in there. He did something like that in Albany. The old Pastor Rebel had him down here one time. And T.D. was sitting there limo, or y'all got the money right? He just sitting there, y'all got the money right? All right, I went. And he waited until he got that money. He didn't move. <laughs> Hiring. Go ahead. 14. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Yes, sir. He said, I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of thine. The good shepherd told us to be on the Sabbath. The good shepherd told us not to eat that swine. The good shepherd told us not to be here on Friends and Family Day. All this crazy stuff. The good shepherd told us we ain't got no Sunday, no choir anniversary. Men's and Women Day. All this stuff. Where did he get this stuff from? 
They make them laws. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Let me show y'all the end of Satan and his people. 